I invite the congregation to join me on page 1501. Our gospel reading today is taken from the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew. I'll begin reading at the 13th verse. You'll see a heading there that says salt and light. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of the pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence, we pray that your word is opened up to us. Strengthen us by the power of your word so that we can be your children in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm afraid as I begin my sermon this morning, I have some bad news for you. In case you missed the memo, it's winter. But there's some good news. The Milwaukee Brewers, pitchers, and catchers report in less than five days for spring training. Frosty Freeze opens in a month. So there is good news among the bad news. As you know, this winter has been a little oppressive. There's been the shoveling, the ice, the cold, the shoveling, the shoveling, and it just goes on and on and on. But there is one thing that happens in the winter that drives me absolutely bonkers. And that is when I get dressed up and I wear my black pants and I get out of the car and accidentally brush up against the car and I've got a white patch of salt on my black pants. That drives me crazy. Salt is a continuous part of our winter experience. And it was interesting during uh, our staff Bible study this week when Pastor Brian was reading the gospel lesson and he says salt loses its saltiness and it's good for nothing except to be thrown out and trampled by men, we all kind of giggled because there's a lot of salt being trampled on by men at this point. And when we look at our Bible passage and we look at this salt and light passage, we often see that, we often preach that that means that we are called to be the spiritual flavor in a world that lacks seasoning. But interestingly enough, at this time of the year, this passage has a little different meaning as I started thinking about it. Because not only is salt a preservative, and not only is salt used for flavor, but at this time of year, we understand that salt is used to protect us. Salt is used to keep us safe. I've been thinking a lot about my father this week, especially with his funeral this past Monday. And I remember when I was a little boy and he taught me how to, to salt the sidewalks at the church. Because he was the church janitor. And he said, Billy, you want to take a big handful of salt and you want to broadcast it down the sidewalk. That's the word he used. You want to broadcast it down the sidewalk. You want to make sure that you use a lot of it. Because we have a responsibility to protect the people who walk on our sidewalks. And so we want to make sure that they stay safe. Now this is, interestingly enough, one of the purposes 
of God's commandments. God's commandments are designed to protect us, and they are designed to keep us safe. You know, oftentimes we think of God's commandments as being overbearing, and, and we, we think of it as having our, our, a finger waved in our face. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness. And it goes on and on and on and on and on again with these commandments. And we think sometimes that being a person of God just means that we have a list of do's and don'ts that we have to follow. But just like my father wanted to protect the people that came onto the property of the church and on his home, so too God is a God that wants to protect his people from the evils of sin that exist in our world. And so he gives us these commandments to protect us. But there's a downfall to God's plan. And that's we as human beings don't like to be told what to do. Right? No one's going to tell me what to do. Or the ever popular, you ain't the boss of me. You ever heard that one before? My wife hears it from me all the time. We, as human beings, are a rebellious people. It is in our nature. It is the nature of sinfulness. So much so that if we see a sign that says wet paint, we'll walk over and check it. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Sign's not going to tell me what to do. I'll show you. We are a rebellious people. It is in our nature to want to rebel against anybody who tells us we can or cannot do something. And that is an unfortunate aspect of our sinfulness. So God wants us to be protected. He wants us to be safe. And so he gives us commandments as salt to protect our lives from the evil that exists around us. And if we are protected, and if we are directing our attention towards God, it is God's intention that we will then create a place where other people can be protected and cared for. And that's what we call the church. You see, in Isaiah's day, the people of God had lost sight of what it meant to be the people of God. Sure, they were fasting and they were studying the Bible and they were praying. But their fasts and their prayers weren't, weren't directed at anybody but themselves. And in the meantime, the people around them, the widows and the orphans, those who were experiencing oppression and discrimination, they were all being forgotten by the people of God. And God says, listen, you need to turn your hearts around. You need to see to it that there are people out there that need us to stand up for them, to protect them, to support them, and to encourage them. And this is the responsibility I give you as the people of God. As my commandments are designed to protect you, I call you as well to protect the most vulnerable and those who are in need around you as the church, we are called to be that place. We are called to be that place that welcomes people into our fold who need protection, who need support, who need an ally of encouragement. We, as the people of God, are called to bring protection to the least, to the lost, and to the last in our culture and in our world. God loves us, and he has created commandments that are designed to protect us and keep us safe. But as we take that protection, and as we take that safety upon ourselves, we too have to become that protection for others. We have to be willing to stand up for the widows and the orphans. We have to be willing to fight for those who are oppressed and discriminated against. We have to be who God calls us to be because that's who we are 
as the people of God. That is how we let our light shine. And that is how we fulfill the commandments of God. We, as the people of God, need to be advocates of the least, the lost, and the last, and provide protection and safety for those who are troubled in our world. Because there will come a day when we will need that as well, and we will need our community of faith. And in that, we all find that our lights shine in the darkness and that the salt of the earth protects us from the evil around us. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, guide us and strengthen us as we continue to live as your children. Help us to reach out to the least, the lost, and the last, and, and to be advocates of those who are oppressed and discriminated against. Strengthen us as we continue to grow. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord of the universe and hope of the world, we pray. Amen. You may remain.